Breaking, FBI just made second arrest in deadly attack after seeing sick part they had in the horror. Americans were stunned to learn that on October 31, it was reported that a lone attacker took the lives of innocent citizens who were walking or cycling around New York City. The attack took place on Halloween, apparently because of what was guessed to be increased foot traffic. That logic means that this sick person was actually hoping to take out children with his attack. The events of the 31st came just one month after the largest mass shooting to take place on American soil when a shooter opened fire in Las Vegas and killed 50-plus people and wounding over 500 more. The questions from that attack are still far from answered when this person decided to take more innocent lives with his holy war. As with most high-profile situations, the media has kept a tight lid on any information they didn't want to get out, but recently we've learned that the New York attacker wasn't alone as we had previously been told. The driver of the truck was apprehended moments after he drove into pedestrians and cyclists, but according to conservative Daily Post, it took under an hour for police to round up one of the perpetrator's known associates who was also an ISIS sympathizer. Despite the horrors from the attack in New York City just a few days ago, the left still refuses to see that the problem with these attackers is that they follow Islam. However, there has been good news as the FBI of New York has apprehended another jihadist in connection to the attack that left 8 dead and 15 injured. It was only 30 minutes after the FBI put out a flyer with the picture and description of the suspect they believed played a major role in the attack when they caught the other Uzbekistani national. The media does a good job of painting the scene as the result of a mentally unstable lone wolf. In reality, these operatives are part of larger organizations that are operating in a jihad against the rest of the world. However, the intelligence community put that stereotypical narrative to rest by immediately releasing information that they believed others were involved. The questions that arise are numerous and of great importance. Who is this second attacker? How did they immediately know that he was also a threat? And if they knew that he was a threat, why were the two of them running around New York City at will renting trucks and buying guns of any sort? Of course we understand that some things are inherent American rights, and among them is the right to carry firearms and flit about at will. We can never forget though, that those are rights given by America to Americans. Why is that such an important distinction? Well for situations just like this one. This person came into the United States, presumably with harmful intentions from the start, and we did nothing to stop him because it's politically incorrect. It's time that lawmakers understand that political correctness is going to bring an end to the United States if only because it prevents us from beating back the flood of crusaders who hate us for our freedoms. Here's more about Tuesday's deadly attack from our source Muksamid Zoyer Kadyrov was the second suspect that the FBI believed played a role in the terror attack that used a truck to drive over innocent civilians. Like the attacker himself, Seifulo Sepov, Kadyrov was an Uzbekistani national with a questionable immigration history to say the least. It was found that Sepov was a recipient of a diversity lottery program that seemed to randomly pick migrants to accept into the United States. Although after the attack it seems that the program is not based on randomization but rather radicalization. This man is a ISIS warrior and yet he was allowed to be chosen as a recipient of a program that should not even exist in the first place. Not only was his selection questionable but Sepov also brought 23 family members with him through chain migration, another questionable program that seems to hide true danger behind demagogic promises to keep families together. Through reports from Europe, we know that many of the Muslims that come from the Middle East, North Africa, and Central Asian regions of the world tend to lie on their government forms in order to hide the truth. This happens in Europe as the Muslim migrants lie about their nationality in order to apply for better benefits as they have no moral compass that tells them not to lie to infidel governments. Islam condones lying to infidels so long as it benefits Muslims and Islam itself. With this logic it is not impossible to rationalize that monsters like Sepov could lie about who is and who is not family in order to get through a less strict immigration process. If a jihadi can make it through a government diversity program, then his jihadist brethren can certainly get through another government process with Sepov claiming they are cousins, uncles, brothers, and fathers. 
Luckily the FBI has managed to capture another involved with Sepov but it is not likely they will release the information relating to his immigration status. He could have entered the country as one of Sepov's 23 family members, thus proving the danger that these programs represent.